develop the Q&A video. Um, I just said I'd pop on and show you, it's like, that this is what happens. <sighs> when you are alone, it's a nightmare. You're just on your own. And you think about everything. <laughs> and I'm not crying because I'm homeless. I'm not crying. I need to go to do my homelessness. I'm just crying, thinking about everything. <laughs> this life is so, so scary. <laughs> You just have to be grateful for who and what you have when you have to because you really don't know when everything will just be gone. So I just want to say like appreciate what you have around you and make sure you tell people that you love them and make sure that everyone knows that you love them and you care about them just spend time with the people that you care about hey everyone it's like 11 o'clock now and i just had like a bit of a breakdown earlier on as you could see in that video and um, i'm doing better now i had a shower um but i just wanted to show you that like that actually does happen and not quite a lot for me but it does happen and I just kind of deal with it. I don't like to let the body see me sad so they were asleep when I was videoing that and um, I just got into the shower to calm myself down and I went through the questions on Instagram to see which questions that he's had for me. So I popped a little question box on Instagram. and asked you is what would you like me to answer for you and a few of the questions I got were what do you find most difficult about being homeless the most difficult thing I find about being homeless is the hunger throughout the day or the loneliness in the night because when my two kids go to sleep, I don't have anybody to talk to. I just am there on my own, kind of browsing through Facebook and thinking about everything which makes me break down. So we're not going to cry again. Or else the hunger throw today, like I said, I have snacks and soups and noodles and everything like that. But breakfast finishes at nine o'clock and dinner starts at half four. So you're constantly trying to eat. Like not constantly trying to eat here yeah. eating because you're bored if you get me or to order food but then you're wasting money or you go out and then you have to get food when you're out anyway so you're still wasting money uh so it would definitely be the hunger and the snacking especially with kai he eats everything does it upset your boyfriend that you and the kids are homeless Yeah, I think it does upset him. Like, he never speaks to me about being upset. But I know that he's upset, if that makes sense. He never tells me, like, oh, I'm upset that you do, or whatever. But he just wants us to get our own home now. I just can all imagine. Like, it's just taken so long. We're here five weeks. Yeah or five weeks and I know obviously there's people in homelessness for years like three years and 20 years um, but however long we're here for is however long we're here for but I won't stop house hunting and I think that people are in them in the homelessness that long because they're just waiting on a council house now that's not for me to say that because Rent prices in Dublin are disgraceful. Like, 
honestly so so disgraceful my sister was on hat for 12.50 and she couldn't get anything um, they gave her normal mainstream hat of 12.50 for her and her son disgraceful I'm on homeless hat and I get 1912 and I still can't find anything the lowest Dublin city centre rented apartment is about 2300 and the council will provide you with the 1900 and um, but then you'll have to actually put the money yourself out of your own pocket to it which is another 600 a month where do you get that when you don't work and you can't work because you don't have a home because if you don't have a home you can't get a child binder it makes no sense so they just actually make it impossible for you to live in Dublin they really really do do you think having two kids is a big difference from just having one no I actually think it's the same like except for the fight and like obviously Carter can fight Kai but Kai can fight and annoy Carter and he's too little to stop that Mm. Yes, this happens every day. Um, but, like, it's honestly just the same. Maybe because it was the age gap that I had my two boys at. Um, I'm not too sure. But I thought it was fine. Like, Kai was four. Well, he was three going four, but he could get up and dress himself, make his own cereal and everything. Like, he was so independent. He was going to preschool and all that and then I had Carter and I was like starting all over again you know knife aids and that was the hardest thing about it would have been doing the knife aids and getting up then the next day to bring Kai to preschool at like half eight in the morning. Now when they get older and they out, um, they're out of the knife feeding stage it's fine like it's honestly grand I don't find it any way difficult at all I never found it difficult with Kai and I just don't find it difficult now, maybe it's just me but I know some people find it really difficult to be a man. How did you feel getting pregnant so young? Your two boys are beautiful. Thank you! On Kai like it was crazy. It wasn't like, you know, I can't even describe it, it just felt so surreal like I didn't feel like I was pregnant at all for the first few weeks like I was just like oh this is a prank like I'm pranking myself <laughs> but no obviously then like I came to terms with it and it was just so mad like now at the time I thought like oh look I'm great I'm able for this and this and that and I'm the best whatever but now if I think about it like I'm 19 now and if I look back now and I think of a 14 year old girl pregnant like I was in second year I hadn't even done my junior search now. If someone in second year came up to me now and was like, I'm pregnant, I'd be like, You are crazy. Like, what the hell? So I, that's why I can understand where everyone's judgments came from when I did say that I was 14 and pregnant. Like, on Facebook. That was that was a nightmare. Um, yeah, that was the worst. About college and school. Well, in school I was grand. Um, so first year I was a little pig. I was suspended all the time. I was I was wild. Um, then the second year I was suspended for forty days straight. And um, they weren't letting me back into the school until my dad told them I was pregnant. <laughs> Um, pregnancy saved me. <laughs> no, but honestly, um, yeah, I got back into school March, March or April time, um, of two thousand and fifteen. After being suspended for forty days, um, over some stupid and um, third year, I really went into myself. I I got bullied a lot for having character, uh, having Kai so young. I got bullied a lot, a lot. So, like, 
some years right now, I left all about everything on social media and that's and all, so I just, I sunk into myself, I never talked to anyone, like, on the first day of school, I, first, first year and second year, I was always running up and getting me friends and things like that, and on the first day of third year, I was at the having Kai, and I went back to school in the January, and never really spoke to anybody. No, I never really spoke to anybody. I done my mocks in the March, February or the March of 2016. I done my mocks. Kai was born in October and I went back to school in January. Um, and then I done my mocks for the junior cert in February or March. Um, still didn't really talk to anyone. I'd talk if I was talked to. Um, then I done my junior cert in the June uh, past it. And then fourth year, I, all my friends left school in fourth year. Like the friends I did have, I had two, <laughs> all my friends. I had two friends and they left. Um, yeah, they, one of them actually got thrown out, one of them left. So then I was left on my own in the school. Um, and I made, no, I didn't make, I became closer with two other girls from the class and then I stayed with them up until fifth year, fifth year, sixth year, something like that. Um, fourth year, I, yeah, I had them. Fifth year, I think it was grand, I think it was just normal, same as fourth year. And then um, sixth year. I became pregnant and um, I done my mocks in March the same time I think it was around that anyways uh, and then I done my leave insert at 36 weeks pregnant and I passed them too so I didn't really have a plan to go to college or what to do for the future like I always did when before I got pregnant second time round I it was a plan to go straight to college and do midwifery because that's what I wanted to be a midwife I still want to be um, or a teacher I was think uh, I was doing the course uh, think about teaching in minute that's what I was going for it was either one of them um, and then I found out I was pregnant and everything switched. So I said I'd take the year out and concentrate on the baby and everything like that. But then when I had him, I couldn't, like I couldn't stay out. I needed routine, I needed to do something, I needed to keep myself occupied. I know you're busy with kids, but I needed to, like I didn't feel educated or whatever. I just needed to go back to school so I went for a social studies class in college and um, I was there for two weeks say <laughs> uh, I was there for about two weeks and I found out Carter was deaf so I had to leave it wasn't that I had to leave I left because you need your attendance to make up part of your grade because if you don't have your attendance, you're missing out on your walk, you're missing out on assignments, you're being late handing your assignments in. So I was like, I have to leave this because I'm going to have doctor's appointments all the time. Carter was only a month old, I think. Um, yeah. And then I left there. And again, I couldn't stay at home. I, I needed to do something like. So I got a job. I done a week course, a week long course which covered me for care skills and care support and I got a job as doing home help. So that is a home support worker and you help the elderly in the home and I loved it. It was so good like helping everybody in the house and not even helping everyone in the house, it was good to help someone like and you get so close with them and you a bond with them and you make them like, they're like your friends, they're like your family then. Um, 
left that in February of 2020 and then the pandemic broke out I couldn't work so I booked an online course uh, to get my major award in the healthcare and um, so I do that now uh, it's a 15 month course and it covers me for all of the level 5 QQIs the 12 of them that I need to work in a hospital to be a healthcare assistant and but I don't think I'm going to do that I'm going to go on to do more courses like I've done forced aid course I've done child forced co child forced course I've done um, mental health courses I've done everything like I just cannot stay unfocused I need routine I need to keep myself occupied it's like I feel not educated enough or whatever why do that now I haven't been doing it so much since I've been here I need to get back on to it like uh, yeah I done communications on that one and I uh, got a distinction and I was just starting my care support until I um, so yeah that's my story with college and school What type of home would you be happy with? For now, any home. Obviously not. Any home, I wouldn't put my kids into a dump. I wouldn't put myself into a dump. No. Um, a two bedroom home. Preferably a house or an apartment. Like Dublin 8 area, Dublin 12 area. Uh, I'd like somewhere with a garden. Um, initially, I actually wanted to build a house. Yeah, I wanted to actually buy a bit of land just outside of Dublin and build a house um, for with a big garden. I wanted to build five bedrooms, like <laughs> not five. Uh, I wanted to build five bedrooms. One for me. One each for the kids. And then I wanted to have like a cinema room and like a gaming room. I wanted a big, big kitchen so I could cook and bake and do all the fun stuff with the kids. Um, and then like an ensuite, obviously for me, ensuites for the kids. And then just like have a guest room and a normal bathroom then for family to stay over. But that will happen one day, just not right now, until I get back up on my feet and get a proper job and get a, a home now, like a now home, but yeah. Would you take a home anywhere in Dublin? No, I wouldn't go anywhere in Dublin. Parts of Dublin, <laughs> they're just not to live in, <laughs> not even to visit. No, I wouldn't. Um, I have my areas picked with the Dublin City Council and I would live in Dublin 8 or Dublin 12. Is Lorcan allowed to stay over and are you allowed to stay out any nights? Lorcan is not allowed to stay here. Lorcan is not allowed to visit me here. He's not allowed inside of the premises. He would be allowed inside if the hotel's pub was open downstairs because that's a local place so we could meet down there but now it's closed because of coronavirus and it's being refurbished and yeah I'm allowed to have nights out I'm allowed to stay out but I don't because I can stay in Lorcan's house his house is so overcrowded no room he shares a room with his brother his brother has his own room then his ma and his dad and everything so that's overcrowded as well and we just don't have money money to be spending on hotels and places for us to stay when i can just stay here and he can stay in his house but the kids see him nearly every day so we're not uh, taking the relationship away they still see each other it's just they can't sleep with one another How did you go about putting your name on the housing list, etc? So, when you're 18, you can put your name on the housing list. Um, 
I toned out then when I was pregnant on Carter. So I said I would wait until Carter was born because when you're adding your kids on you have to bring their PPS number and their birth cert. So there was no point in me registering onto the housing list and then having to go back down a few months later just to give Carter's details. So I waited until August 2019 um, to go down and I went down with my ID. My housing application was filled out. I had the revenue was at a stamp in my uh, the tax page or whatever it is, you know, the tax page on the back of that. Yeah, they were at the stamp in that you have to bring your PPS number, proof of address, proof of income, and if you have any children, you have to bring their PPS number and their birth cert, and you also have to bring your ID. Would you ever move out of Dublin? For now, with council houses and rented houses, no, I wouldn't move out of Dublin. I would stay in Dublin. Um, I said in the last, uh, in two questions previous, that it would be just Dublin 8 and Dublin 12. But I also said that I would like to build my own home. So I would move out of Dublin for that. Not far from Dublin, just a bit out of Dublin. I would move, buy a bit of land there, and I would move there. Um. Well, that's the second get to know me Q and A type thing. Before some was all on my homelessness. This was a mix. Um. But yeah, I hope you all liked it. If you did give us a big thumbs up <laughs> smash it smash that like button and um, share the video with your friends if you wish anything you want to do to be honest and um, subscribe and turn the notification bell on because I will be coming up with some good videos in the next few weeks I'm gonna video myself going out looking for viewings house hunting and if a property comes available I will be videoing myself shopping doing shopping hauls on um new stuff for a house if i get one and then um, if i do get one i will be doing house tours before and afters and like daily vlogs always <laughs> so make sure to subscribe 